Hi, this is Pedia at Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com, and this is part six of our little skybox blending. So I'm going to open up Unity, Model Development, and we were just about to modify our sunrise line. So for a few extra conditions that we're going to want here, we're going to want to make sure that it stops being sunrise when the time of day is less than our sunset variable. And we want to make sure we're using the double ampersand for and. So what we're basically saying is when the time of day is greater than sunrise and the time of day is less than sunset. Because once we reach the sunset time, we want it to start scaling our skybox back for us. Now you can add this all in one line if you want. Some people find it easier to read if it's on two lines. Uh, generally, if there's just two or three conditions, I'll put them all in one line. If there's more, I'll just end up putting them on separate lines. It really doesn't matter. Whatever's easier for you to read. And then there's going to be one more condition I want to check. And that's actually going to be our actual skybox blend setting. So if render settings dot skybox, and this time we want to get a float. And the float we want to get is our blend property. It starts with a capital B. And, and we want to check to see if it's less than one. So again, this line. If the time of day is greater than our variable that we're setting for our, to start our sunrise, and the time of day is less than our variable that we have set for when we want to start the sunset, and if the render setting skybox get float uh, blend variable is less than one. So if we look at our blend sky box, if it's less than one, and of course one is full and zero is all the way to the left. So basically it's saying if it's not full, keep blending. Now I'm going to add another line here and it's going to be an else if. Now we haven't covered else if yet. And the, basically the way it works is it comes down and it checks this condition. And if it meets this condition, it doesn't even check this one. It just goes about doing whatever's in between this code and then skips all the way to whatever's left after the else if condition. And if it checks this condition and it's false, it'll automatically you can go down to the next one to check. And the next one we want to check is to see if the time of day is greater than our sunset variable and our render settings dot skybox dot get float and the float of course we want is our blend except this time we want to check to see if it's greater than zero so if the day if our time of day is greater than our sunset variable and the skybox is not all the way to the left yet what we'll want to do is set our time of day to equal our game settings time of day dot sunset and then of course we're going to grab our blend skybox I'm just going to cut and paste it in then I'm going to add another condition here which is just an else block and in here, I'm just going to say that our time of day is equal to game time dot time of day dot idle. Now let's go over this one more time. So it checks here if it's false. We know it goes and checks here. Now if it checks here and it's false as well, it's going to go down to our else statement. And in our else statement, all we're doing is just setting the time of day to idle. So for whatever reason, this function gets called uh, by setting it to idle. We make sure that we actually don't adjust the blend settings. Now, if you have more in your enumeration than I do, you're also going to want to add more else ifs in your condition here. And just remember the last else if well, all your other else ifs are going to be like this one here, except you'll be changing the variables. And your very last else if 
you don't have to check two different variables you just check the last one so let's just save that off and let's go check so I'm gonna start it up and here we are it's nighttime now it's sunrise is starting so it slowly blends I may want to increase when my Sun starts to rise and I've obviously got to change where my sun is setting. So let's say 0.7. I'll start that up. So my sun's fully risen. You notice the counter stopped counting. It should start blending down. Okay, so I want it before 0.7. And of course, this also is going to depend on your speed. So I'm going to say 0.6. I'm going to increase my modifier to 5. And I'm going to put 0.15 here. So I want it to start becoming daytime a little bit later. And I want it to blend faster. Now, of course, I've got my day set to a 30 second day. So those variables you might want to change if you, you know, have your day night cycle set to an hour. So I'm counting down. And that seems pretty good. So I'm going to stop that. Uh, since we have a few minutes left, let's go up to our Windows menu. I'll see that into the asset store. And when you open this up for the first time, you might be asked to log in. I've already, whoops, I've closed it. I've already logged in. So I won't have to worry about that. But while we're here, let's just grab some lens flares. And they're not sorted that way. That's fine. I believe they're under art packs and there they are so we'll just click on them they're free import them now what it does is it downloads it to your assets folder that's already on your system and then I know when it's done it's just going to ask you to import and I'm just going to grab them all so I'll import them now while that's importing I want to open up the asset store again And I just wanted you to notice that all of your assets that you've downloaded, it keeps track of now. And you can also notice when stuff is either up to date or needs to be updated. And some of my assets just aren't on the store yet. So let's close that down. And now that I've imported these extra flares, I'm just going to go up. I'm going to take my red sun and I'm just going to give it a, I'll, we'll say a laser flare. And my yellow one, I'm going to try Sun from Space. Hit play. Make it a little bit larger. And there we go. We notice how just changing the flare completely changes how it looks. Now I'm going to move this into my actual game project now and I don't want to just copy everything over. I'm just actually going to make a package for it. So I'm going to have to mark what I want to bring. So I'm going to bring my lens flares that I just downloaded. I'm going to want my scripts, my shaders, my skyboxes, and I'm not sure. There's nothing in the standard assets that I'm using that I can think of. I've already turned off my lens flares. Actually, I'm going to combine them if they're not already there. So I don't see the 50, small, or the sun. So what I'm going to do is just take all these lens flares and drag them up there. Great. So now I'll just 
select this folder. I'm going to want my scripts, my shader, my skyboxes, and I want to export these as a new package. So I can either do that by right clicking and saying export package, or you can just come up to your assets menu and select the same option. Either one works. So it's going to show you this little window here and it's going to show you everything that's in there. And you can go through and individually add or remove items. Of course, you have your all and your none. Now, it says include dependencies. I've had a problem with this, at least during the, the beta version of Unity 3. And if you had an inheritance going on with your scripts, that would inherit the base class. Now, I haven't tested to see if this works now in the final version of Unity, but it's just something to keep in mind that if you do, for some reason, export your package and when you re-import it somewhere else and the base classes aren't there, that's, that's what's happening. So I'll just hit export. I'll have to give it a name. I'm just going to throw it on my desktop and I'll just call it day, night, cycle, package. I'll save it. In the next video, I'll include that into my hack and slash project, and then we'll work on the lighting, and that should be our final one for our day-night cycle. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.